His name is above, his name is above depression. His name is above loneliness. Oh, his name is above disease. His name is above cancer. His name is above every other name.
Um, I'm so glad to join you this afternoon. As you heard, I'm here and able to represent the Baptist Union of Scotland, which is the network of 155 or so churches around the country that Denny Baptist Church is a very important part of. And I should add, the Baptist Union of Scotland is great buddies with the Baptist Union of Great Britain, where Jonathan's come from in uh, the church in Partington. And it's so good to be just singing, isn't it, about the goodness of God and the faith that all my life you've been faithful because today's really about God faithfully working out his plan in a new season in Jonathan and Caroline's life, in a new season in the life of Denny Baptist Church, and actually for the folk from Partington as well, uh, a new season of God's faithfulness for you as well. So what we're going to do in the next couple of minutes, slightly more than a couple of minutes, is we're going to hear some testimonies. We're going to hear the story of how God led Jonathan to this church and how the church recognized God's call. So there'll be testimonies, and then there'll be promises. Jonathan will make some promises, and then everyone here will take their part in that as well. And then there'll be prayer and the laying on of hands as we set apart Jonathan to this ministry. So that's what's coming up. But just as we begin, some words about ministry. We've heard so much in the last week about the word service. Since the death of Her Majesty the Queen, so many people have talked about her commitment, her faithfulness, but her service to the nation. And uh, at a time in, and in a world where self-fulfillment seems to be the motivation for doing so much, service is back in the news. And the word ministry means service. And so everyone who follows Jesus Christ is called to ministry. Everyone who's been baptized into Jesus Christ is called to serve him and one another in the fellowship of the church, wherever we go, and in all that we do. But God calls some people to servant leadership in his church, to devote themselves especially to prayer and the word of God, to better equip the church for the life of discipleship in God's world. And these people we appoint and release into that role with prayer and with our blessing. And we respect their role amongst us as ministers, examples, and leaders. And so that's what we're recognizing as we discern together and re receive and recognize together Jonathan's call to Denny Baptist Church. So Jonathan, come and join me here at the front. And this is what everyone's been waiting for, to see you, not me. <laughs> And would you just tell us a little bit of the, of the story of how God led you to recognize he was calling you here? Yeah, certainly. Firstly, thank you for coming. It's lovely to see you all, even if I don't know you all. It's lovely to see you. And big welcome to the newest member of the Denny Baptist Church family, Mia, who is here today. <laughs> Amazing. So... This is a concise version of our story of how we came to be here. Uh, we'd been at the People's Church in Partington for 14 years, and uh, we'd loved the church, we'd loved the community. But uh, a couple of summers ago, we just felt the Lord was saying it was time for a new adventure. And uh, there was one day when I, I woke up with those words feeling like God had spoken. Uh, and I'm not really that sort of person, you know, but I couldn't shake it off. And uh, God really confirmed that in the months afterwards. There were three books that I was reading, uh, all independent of each other, all sort of saying the same thing about God calling a person or a people uh, out of something that was successful and out of something that they'd seen grow uh, to be obedient, to be a follower. So one of the books said, why leave a church that was doing great things? Why would you leave all these people that you loved? Why leave a country when the church seems to be growing? And then the writer went on to speak of obediently following God into a new place. So we'd been holding that for a while and thinking, well, God, we're here. We, you know, we'll follow. As long as you make it clear, we'll follow. And uh, yeah, that, that sort of built on that, really. Uh, last October, we were at a conference where someone shared a word about 
your assignment is complete, you're being released to do a new thing. Uh, and on top of that, uh, last summer, one of our kids just out of the blue said, uh, we f I feel like God's just said we're going to move house and it'll happen within a year. And um, like we hadn't spoke to the kids about any of this stuff, so we thought that was probably God. Um, so, yeah, there's more we could, we could say about that, but with tears and wrestling, you know, we really believe God was saying it was time for a new adventure, that he was calling us to somewhere new, and we want to be obedient to him, because being a Christian is firstly to be obedient and to be a follower. So we, we didn't know that it was here at that point, but uh, we had that in one hand, we were holding that for a little while, and I'd wondered if God was calling us to be nearer to Caroline's parents and her brother John, uh, to be a support to them. And uh, if you've not met John, you'll meet him today. And if you're really blessed, he'll ask you to read to him. Uh, so the day, after the, the day after we'd had that conversation, it seemed like that was confirmed to us, Caroline's Bible reading in a year. Uh, just so happened to be on 1 Timothy 5 about caring for your family as being part of putting your faith into practice. And the Lord showed Caroline a picture uh, of a triangle of some place names that turned out to be places in Scotland. So you can ask her more about that over a sausage roll. Um, so we'd had a few conversations with Phil, our regional minister in the Northwest, and then had a few conversations with yourself uh, on Zoom. And in time, Denny Baptist Church's profile came up uh, earlier this year. And it was a church that's within this geographic triangle that Caroline had a picture of. It's 25 minutes from the family up here. And uh, in the church profile, the wording of that was that the church was ready for a new adventure, which was the very words that the Lord had given us at the start of this journey. So the profile spoke of replanting and starting again and reaching the community. And we were really excited by that. And we spent some time talking uh, on Zoom, and then we came up and met some people in person and met the church in person, and just really felt like, you know, this is, this is where God wants us, this is the right place, and uh, just trust God in that, you know, if we feel it's right, we believe it's right, and if it's of God, the people will feel that too. So uh, here we are, we're excited to be here, uh, you know, seeing the Lord all, already at work in the community and excited about what he's going to do uh, through the church here, through all the churches here, to see his kingdom built in Denny and the surrounding areas. So that's us. That's brilliant. What a great testimony to God speaking, and not just speaking one day, but over a period of time, and not just speaking to you, but speaking to others around you as well. Thank you for that. Uh, why don't you just stay at the front, and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll ask Alan Donaldson to come and join us. Alan's been the moderator of the church, although I can't imagine you keeping anything moderate, Alan. Uh, <laughs> and uh, um, you uh, could, I think, say how God has spoken in the church here and led you to call Jonathan. Well, it's a first time for everything, and I have never had this job in ministry before. That is to explain the telling of a call. I'm normally on that side, but it's interesting being on the church side. So for the last two years, uh, I've been working with uh, Denny Baptist Church to support them through this post-COVID period, and ultimately to help them in the search for a new minister. The church became vacant back in January 21, I was invited at that time to act as an interim pastor uh, because none of us had anything to do during COVID. And, uh, and we began to prepare the church for the future in a very fast-changing world. And over the next year, the church completed a whole variety of tasks together. We, we began to spend more time together. Do you remember that time when you couldn't spend time together? We started to spend more time together, initially on Zoom, but we were glad when we were able to come back together into the church building and see each other faithfully and regularly. We created more opportunities and more variety in the church's prayer life under the guidance of, of Lorna around the corner there, the, 
the prayer team got established, prayer walks started to happen, a momentum prayer gathering once a month, a, a day of prayer, a night of prayer, vacancy prayer gatherings, WhatsApp prayer groups. I'm still on that one. Yeah, WhatsApp prayer groups. And they all got begun and, and the prayer life of the church began to grow as we look towards how are we going to fill this vacancy. We worked together on a, a draft vision statement for the church and, and what the vision for the future of the church might be, but keeping it really general so there's plenty of scope for a new leadership to come together and, and shape that. And then a team of us put together a community audit of Denny and the surrounding towns, everything within the school catchment area here. We explored the type of place that, that Denny was, its particular challenges, its joys, what others were engaged in and what we might consider doing in the future. And then it was as soon ago as January 2022 that we held a church meeting to discuss the type of minister we imagined for the church going forward. Strangely key to that conversation was Martin Hodgson, who had been speaking in the church just the week before. And he had spoken to us of the importance of going together on an adventure as a church. And the leaders had met with him for a lunch after that sermon and had been captivated by that sense of going forward on an adventure. And when the whole church discussed that together, we had to make sure that those phrases made it into the profile. You can't imagine the excitement in my heart when I read them on Jonathan's profile. We were looking for someone who would lead us on adventure. Whilst preaching, caring, community engagement were all skills that we hoped that the new minister would have, we were looking for someone who would lead and facilitate that adventure in the coming years together. Someone who would work with us, work alongside us, share the future ministry of the church with us, invest themselves in us and in the community. Well, we released the profile to the four winds and all Baptist ministers who would consider moving, and four very able candidates got in touch with us. Our small search group sifted through them, and we said we'd really like to get to know two better. So we met on Zoom, we chatted with them, just not about your, just to get to know you as a person. And at the end of that, we were agreed that we should contact Jonathan and Carolyn and see if it was possible for them to come and visit. They came up uh, one day, they ate with us, they relaxed with us, they traveled around the town and see what God would say to them. The curry from mango was excellent as we ate and, and laughed together. We asked questions of one another and we very quickly realized that we were really well suited to one another. Listening to Jonathan share his vision of church and church growth and, and adventure into new models of church was frightening but exciting. Hearing Caroline speak of the specific calling of God on their lives was supernaturally exceptional, and it really touched our hearts. And the group had no hesitation after a few days of prayer to invite Jonathan to come and preach as the sole nominee and to meet the whole congregation. Is this story matching at the moment? Are we, it hasn't diverted. That's always the fear. Uh, with just a few weeks' notice, though, they were back to see the church that week. The church watched some YouTube videos of, of, of Jonathan preaching. Best the best ones. He only sent the good ones <laughs> from, from Partington People's Church. And later that week, they arrived. We had a barbecue accompanied by Scottish drizzle. We had a, a Sunday morning service that seemed to match up with what God had been saying to us, with what God was saying through Jonathan. We had a church meeting where almost everybody in the room spoke. We gave everyone a chance to share what they had felt God say over the weekend. And after everyone had spoken, we then voted together, and everyone agreed and cast their votes in favor of calling them. 
Finally, at 10 p.m., I got the chance to make the phone call. These guys were in a house group up till that time. And to extend that call informally and then begin the formal process that have led us to today. It's been quite a journey. But as a church, we're delighted at how God has worked to bring us together in this place. And we look forward to all that God will now do. Thank you, Alan. Thanks for spelling out the, the parallel and clear way God was speaking to the church. Good. Um, you, you may take a seat. <laughs> Jonathan, some questions now for you. Do you accept the call of Christ and this congregation to serve as minister here, teaching the word of God faithfully, equipping God's people for works of service, and shepherding God's flock, which is under your care? In the strength that Christ gives, I do. Jesus commissioned us to preach the good news and make disciples everywhere. Will you proclaim that good news through word and deed, relying on the power of the Spirit, making disciples and seeking the coming kingdom of God? As a disciple of Jesus Christ, I will call others to follow him. Jesus said, feed my sheep. In your ministry, will you be diligent in your study of scripture and play your part in the nourishment and nurture of the flock of God? Trusting the Lord as my shepherd, I will. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray and not give up. Will you be constant in encouraging God's people in prayer and cultivating a life of prayer yourself? By God's grace, I will. Now, Denny Baptist Church is in fellowship with the Baptist Union of Scotland, and our Declaration of Principle describes our shared convictions as a family of churches. So I now invite you to read this declaration to us and affirm that you're in agreement with it. For full transparency, I've got this written down and I haven't memorized it yet. Our Scottish Baptist Declaration of Principle states three things. Firstly, that the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and Saviour, is the sole and absolute authority in all matters pertaining to faith and practice, as revealed in the Holy Scriptures, and that each church has liberty under the guidance of the Holy Spirit to interpret and administer his laws. Secondly, that Christian baptism is the immersion in water into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of those who have professed repentance towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day. And thirdly, that it is the duty of every disciple to bear witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ and to take part in the evangelization of the world. I am in wholehearted agreement with this statement. There's now a part for you, Jonathan, and the congregation of Denny Baptist Church to share in together as you make a covenant with one another. These are words that will form a solemn agreement between minister and congregation, a commitment which you make before God. So uh, I'm going to invite you, Jonathan, to lead in some words that will come up on the screen, and there will be a part for the congregation of of Denny Baptist Church to respond to. So if you are part of Denny Baptist Church and you're able to stand, could I ask you to stand now and respond as Jonathan leads? Respond enthusiastically, people. <laughs> Today we stand with each other, recognizing Christ the Lord in our midst, affirming our faith in the God who loves us with a love that transforms us, and who calls us to work for a transformed world. Today we stand with each other, recognizing Christ in each other, affirming the call of the Spirit, and the call of the Savior of this day. 
today. I bring myself and the gifts I have and I commit to serve and encourage this church and community to respect and care for you, to take responsibility among you, to seek God with you, to listen to God in you, and to work with you to be like Christ in this world. God of life, you call us and envision us. We give ourselves today to each other and to you, trusting that as you call us, so you promise to be with us, to nurture and sustain our life together and to guide our paths. Amen. Um, if you would remain standing and everyone else who's able, if you would stand as well, please. And so this is a question for those who are not part of this local church, but are here to support and celebrate this new ministry. I'm going to ask you a question, and if you are able, would you answer, we do. Do you recognize the work of God's Spirit bringing together this minister and congregation? And do you offer your prayers and encouragement for them in the days ahead? Thank you. Then we are going to come to a time in the service where a few people gather around Jonathan and lay hands on him and pray for him to set him apart for this ministry. So the leadership team from Denny and Alan's moderator are going to come and do that. Others, please be seated now. Father God, what an honour it is to be here today to pray your blessing on Jonathan and his family as they accept your call to ministry here in Denny. Thank you, Lord, for their obedience to follow where you lead. Thank you for the passion they have for your word and for your power that's at work in them. Thank you that you are the centre of their lives and for the way this shines out of them and inspires others. Thank you that you have already equipped Jonathan, Jonathan with everything he needs to serve you and that he can stand on your promises today, Lord, knowing that you will be his source, his strength and his guide. As we start on our new adventure together, we ask that you will help us to love one another, to support and encourage each other and to reach our town with the love that you have shown to us. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we come before you and we thank you for where we are found today. We are found in your house and we are worshipping you. But today, Father, is a special day for one family. We bring the Boyer family before you and we thank you for them. Father, we thank you that Jonathan was obedient to the call, that him and Caroline discussed this thing and found this was the right way to go, to follow you into a new adventure. So, Father, we pray for Jonathan. And as he begins his work here, help us to be that need that he would need at this time. We pray for the family. We know moving house can unsettle, can sometimes be right down. But Father, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, lead, direct, and guide them. Be the comfort that they would need at this time. Be with Jonathan as he studies your word. But Father, as he brings your precious word, help us to be obedient to it. Not just hear us, but do it of your precious word. And this we ask in your precious name. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing this church and people together. We thank you for all that you have been to Jonathan over the years for the faithfulness he has experienced from you, for the grace and mercy that you have poured into him, and for the opportunities for service that you have given to him.
Father, we pray that as he begins this new opportunity, you would bless him with your grace. You would bless him with your peace. You would bless him with your presence. That you would grant him great wisdom and great insight to the way that you are moving in these times, that we might join in your adventure together, and that he might have eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church at this time in history. And as you have spoken to him and the church in unison in our recent past, we pray that you would continue to speak in unison. We can pray that we would all continue to have ears to hear and be ready to respond. Lord, we pray for Carolyn. We ask that you would bless her. We ask that you would strengthen her, give her hope in our heart, give her everything that she needs, Lord, to be a blessing to this church, to Jonathan, to the wider family. Strengthen her in every way that she needs that strength, that she might be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We pray for Matthew. We ask, Lord, that you'd strengthen him in his, his new school. We ask that you would bless him as a witness to your faithfulness and your power at work in him. We pray for Anna. We thank you for her smile and the love that she has, and we pray that you would anoint it in the power of your spirit, that she might glow your presence wherever she goes here in Scotland. And we pray for Naomi also, this beautiful princess. We ask, Lord, that you would grant her joy and laughter and a spirit of peace wherever she goes, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you like to just stay on the platform for a moment, folks? So, Jonathan, today we have heard testimony of how God has led you and this church together. We have heard your promises to be committed to ministry here, and you and the church together have made a covenant with one another. And now through the prayer and laying on of hands, we've set you apart for this ministry. Therefore, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and on behalf of our Baptist family of churches, we declare you inducted as minister of Denny Baptist Church. And so we say, may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine on you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and be gracious to you. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. So the worship band are going to lead us as we continue now.
really kind of you to have built this platform to give me a little bit of extra. <laughs> Good afternoon. So, I, I had a journey up from, um, from Manchester yesterday, and I, I did used to, to live just up the road from here in Stirling for a few years, and I remembered it as a teenager. And as I was driving, I, I had two hours of kind of thinking of all the places I've lived, because I've lived in a lot of places, and all the people I've seen. And I started to, I had about two hours of actually thanking God for how many people my life had, had, had been through. Now, now, when I text my wife and told her this, I think she probably must have been thinking, what's wrong with him? Because he's normally a right miserable old so-and-so. <laughs> but but for, for, for a couple of hours, I was thanking God, and I realized how grateful I was for all the people I've met, for all the places I've been, for all the times that I'd seen God show up and change things around, show me that he loved me. And sometimes in the, the midst of all the things that we do and all the places that we go and all the troubles that we find ourselves in, we often forget to give thanks. So I had a two hours drive, probably going past the Lake District and then heading towards the, the beautiful hills as I got towards Scotland. It, it stirred maybe something else inside of me, but I've been grateful. And um, then I went for a little drive uh, down memory lane, had a little bit of a, a, a mooch about where I used to I won't tell you what I did as a teenager, but what I did as a teenager and the place I used to go and, and, and all of that stuff. And um, then I get here and I'm in this beautiful story about how God's directing lives, how God moves people from one place to another, how God turns things around and how he intervenes. And, and just the blessing that that is to be able to have lives that cross over a, time, a, a season where God is going to do some brand new things, things not yet thought of, um, but things that perhaps reflect some of our history and our story along the way. So I'm going to speak for a few minutes. Um, you said about an hour and a half, didn't you, John? <laughs> um, uh, on faith, and, and it's easy to preach on faith if you're preaching on Hebrews 11, so that's what I am going to do. Um, but it is moving to hear a story, and, and the details of your story coming here has really excited me, as I've heard and, and sort of got little glimpses along the way of what God has been saying and doing. Uh, and, and of course, it, it takes faith to respond um, to God calling, faith for, for, for John and Caroline to say yes and move their family up here. It took faith for the church here to say, actually, we feel that this is, this is the right person, this is the right people to come and join. It takes faith to make that step. And it takes faith for the guys in Partington to say, actually, we're going to let him go. We're going to let Caroline go, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take hold of the next thing that God has got for us. That takes faith, too. And so I, it felt like a, a good place to go. So Victor's going to help me out. Has Victor gone? Victor's going to read a couple of passages as we go uh, for it. So he's, he's going to read the first one to us, if that's all right. Which microphone is he on? This one? There you go. Yeah. That's fine. Good. Thanks, Victor. Okay. Hebrews chapter 11. First six verses just now and more later. Faith is the confidence that we hope for will actually ha happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old earned a good reputation. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a more acceptable offering to God than Cain did. Abel's offering gave evidence that he was a righteous man and God showed his approval of the gifts. Although Abel is long dead, he still speaks to us by his example of faith. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Amen. Thank you, Victor. You know, faith in God causes us to act. It causes us 
to move, it causes us to build, it causes us to, to begin to create. That's, that's the thing that happens when, when faith is, is switched on in our, our lives, in our hearts, in our inner beings. God created people in his own image. We're made in the image of the creator God. People are created by design, if you like, it's our, it's our, it's our DNA. I guess the point of the cross was to take away the, the barrier of sin and to reconnect us in relationship to our Creator. And then the point of the Holy Spirit indwelling us is that we would become inspired, heavenly artists in a sense, creating kingdom works of living on earth, creating beauty out of ashes and joy out of despair. God inspires vision in his people and the more we get to know our creator the more divinely creative we become yeah, God is delighted I think when we begin to create eternal things from our two or, true origins in him instead of uh, kind of our, our own consumed idea of of, of the temporary things that we have and our self-ordained agendas that we, we run with. When we use our creativity to bring his kingdom into life on earth, I think it delights God. Faith believes in this creator God and diligently seeks after him. Faith believes that God rewards those who create along with him. This story uh, lists tons of people, Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Sarah, Isaac, Jacob at the very beginning. But it also says this, says this in verse 13. It says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they'd left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. We may never get to see the finished works that we're working on the earth. We may not. We may see the beginnings. And, and usually we'll see some progress that's made along the way. We may begin to work on things that other people have already been working on. Something started by somebody else, we may put our hands to and continue to build it. Faith believes that we're working on something much bigger than us as individuals or in the location we are. Faith believes that what we are working towards right now, we will see in completion when God makes everything new. It's not just about the temporary of the here and now, but our eyes should be fixed on what's to come, on the eternal. In fact, I want to read just from 1 Corinthians, uh, another passage you'll be probably familiar with if you've, you've been in church a lot. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15 says this, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. We're all working on parts of God's masterpiece. He's the designer, the architect. We all need to take our place and be counted to put our shoulder to the work, to, to be where he needs us to be with all that we are. Here in Denny, uh, John and Caroline and the church here will be building on foundations that others have already labored on recently and in years and years gone by. They'll begin to create together. They'll begin to dream what's next together. They'll begin to get a vision for the next part of the tapestry here that God has given them to work on. 
the really exciting thing is that, that others locally here, maybe not part of Denny Baptist Church, but others in the local area, others in the region, and others nationally are working together. Sometimes we see how things work together because it makes sense. Other times we only get a glimpse of how things work together. Sure, <laughs> that God sees the end from the beginning. He knows what he's doing. And wherever it is that we are working on, whatever it is that we are working on, when we're looking to him, when we're watching what he is saying to us and listening carefully to his voice, we can be sure that we will find our way into being part of this great big thing that God is doing on the earth. In Partington, the church there, and uh, the other new people that God will call to join them, they will be building and creating, continuing on top of work already being laid, but also dreaming and having vision for, for something new. And although we're four hours down the road where we are in Manchester, guess what? God is working with us all together on one big, wonderful piece of work. Victor, would you read the, the next, next few verses for us? It changed the gear. <laughs> okay. uh, down to Hebrews 11, down to verse 17 uh, to begin. It was my faith that uh, Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. It was by faith that Isaac promised blessings for the future to his sons, Jacob and Esau. It was by faith that Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and bowed in worship as he leaned on his staff. It was by faith that Joseph, when he was about to die, said confidently that the people of Israel would leave Egypt. He even commanded them to take his bones with them when they left. It was by faith that Moses' parents hid him for three months when he was born. They saw that God had given them an unusual child, and they were not afraid to disobey the king's command. It was by faith that Moses, when he grew up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to share the oppression of God's people instead of enjoying the fleeting pleasures of sin. He thought it was better to suffer for the sake of Christ than to own the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking ahead to his great reward. It was by faith that Moses left the land of Egypt. Not fearing the king's anger, he kept right on going because he kept his eyes on the one who is invisible. It was by faith that Moses commanded the people of Israel to keep the Passover and to sprinkle blood on the doorposts so that the angel of death would not kill their firstborn sons. It was by faith that the people of Israel went right through the Red Sea as though they were on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to follow, they all drowned. It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. How much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. 
Women received their loved ones back again from death, but others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at, and their backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prisons. Some died by stoning. Some were sawn in half, and others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats, destitute and oppressed and mistreated. They were too good for this world, wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. Amen. Thanks, Victor. Okay. You're probably doing all right with that pattern, you know, the, the going through the, the, the sea and it parting on the other side, and then it, and it gets to being sawn in two and it starts to feel a bit uncomfortable. Um, but, but the truth is there are bumps in the road. The truth is that there are problems that we will face. The truth is there are sacrifices that will, will have to be made. There are hard things that come when we're moving in faith, when we're following God, when we're being obedient to what he says. It's not an easy thing to move from one end of the country to the other. It's not an easy thing to make decisions that change things for your family and for your loved ones. It's not an easy decision to... to, to change the way that you live in a comfortable way and step into something that's uncomfortable. There are, there are decisions that we make that sometimes um, they become hard before we're ready and before we even realize that was it, but it's a result of the decision we made. We heard God speak, we step into it, and then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose in our world. Ever been there? Happens. But there are other things that define what the story is all about. There are things that, that mark out the journey for us. There are things that we will walk through and God will lead us through triumphantly. And we will see and hear and experience his goodness and his work in our lives along the journey. The chapter finishes with these two verses. These, the people that were mentioned, these were all commended for their faith. None of them received what had been promised. For God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Gear change. I went to college with a guy. Um, I think he's called John. I think he's a minister in Wales. We were all sharing our stories and doing things that kind of ministers do when they're in training and it was deep and meaningful and all that. And, and, and then this guy gets to share. And, and he starts to share my, I mean, I was listening to everybody else, but not like I was listening to John when he started to share. And, 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 and he started to share. And this is what he said. He said, before we were sharing about our calling, and he said, before, when I, was, when I was praying about whether I should go to Bible college, and I was praying about what, what God would say to me, he said, I had a dream, and this is the dream. He said, I was, walk, I, was, I was taken up to heaven, and I was walking through these corridors in heaven, and there was doors all around, and I went through one door, and there was, there was um, Elijah in another door, and there was, there, was, there was Simon Peter, and I went through another door, and he said, I was looking, I was looking for, for, for some really big doors. I was looking for, I wanted to find Moses, and I wanted to find Abraham, and I found Moses, and I opened the door, and I said, tell me about when you parted the Red Sea. Tell me about when the quail came and you were fed. Tell me about when God led you out of Egypt. And he said, never mind about that. Tell me about when the Holy Spirit came upon the church. Tell me about the time that you live in. Tell me about what it's like to see the Spirit poured out on all flesh and Jesus preached across all the nations. Tell me about that. Because that's the time we live in. That's our time. That's your time here in Denny. That's our time. This is what he was building to. This is what this chapter of faith is all about. We are building on a tapestry already begun. We are stepping into something that's already started a long time ago. God's plan is being unfolded, and we get to be a part of it. We get to join in with it. And each of us in the place that we are and in the place that we come from with the skills and the abilities that we have, if we lay down our lives and give it to him, we will take part in that wondrous thing. I've got a good imagination. And... Um, 
This is the picture in my, my imagination. This is the picture. It's God congratulating each person in this chapter and, and others not mentioned in this chapter and pulling them alongside himself when their turn is done and when their course is finished and he pulls them in and he gives them a warm, warm embrace and then he turns them side on so that they can see what's going on. And as the work continues, they cheer and see each generation passing this work and watching as this work unfolds before their eyes, cheering. And when each person finishes their part and completes their piece, they're pulled in and congratulated in the same manner. Celebrating. Until one day the, the work is finally completed. And then all of a sudden the place erupts with celebration and joy. And all the generations embrace and are amazed as the work of God is seen in all its glory. And the sufferings and the disappointments and the hardships will suddenly seem all worth it. Like when a mother holds her baby after a difficult labor. You're supposed to be a part of this. You're called to be a part of this. This passage highlights to us the idea of real heroic faith. The world's prevailing culture drives people to live as though this world is all that there is. It peddles a, a kind of a narrative that we need to wring out of this life every last experience and pleasure we can get because we only live once. I guess often it's true for many of us that we're driven by the fear that we'll die before we experience one thing or another. As he said, if every good thing ends when we die. Faith tells a different narrative. God will make everything new. Everything we have now will become better. An unspoiled new earth. Those who know and work with the Creator will be there forever and miss out on nothing. Those who give up things now for Him will experience great reward. I would really like to pray for us just before we, we hand over, if that would be all right. And I would just like to pray really simply that the Holy Spirit will come upon us afresh. Whether you're from Denny Baptist Church or whether you're from one of the surrounding churches in the area, whether you're from Manchester, in my end, and I know there's some, um, but wherever we are and whatever, whatever God is doing with us, I pray really simply that the Holy Spirit will come upon us afresh, that he'll ignite our faith and we'll put our shoulder to the work wherever we are, knowing that one day we will see the bigger picture because we only get to see a small bit now. But when we do, and when we see how this whole thing works out, joy <laughs> will be unspeakable. Holy Spirit, will you come and fill us afresh right now? We thank you that we get to work with you. We thank you that you called us that you placed us here. You placed us in the, the exact right place for us. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, will you come and breathe fire and life upon us afresh? Will you captivate our imagination that we dare see more and more of what it is you're doing at the time we live in? Let your fire fall on all that we are. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Is Lorna leading us in some prayer now? Is that the right, is that the right prompt?
country for everything and everyone that has ministered to us in some way. We pray your blessing on them. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus that is willing to sacrifice for his own and for us. We thank you that he not only died, but rose again. It's not just a story, but a truth that we know to be true. And we long for others to experience it too, and to have that same hope dwelling inside them. And so we thank you for Jonathan and Caroline, Matthew, Hannah, and Naomi, and for bringing them among us. Bless this family richly. Give them peace and joy in their hearts. And as they become part of our church family, let them prosper in all they do for you. Give them wisdom and abundance and protect them from the plans of evil one. Help the children to settle and make friends and feel at home here. Give us all a clear vision of the plan you have for the future work of the church. And we know you will provide everything we need to accomplish this. Help us as a church to love and care for the Boyer's family and indeed everyone you bring into our lives. And above all, help us to follow the example of Jesus in the way we act and in the things we say and to obey the command to go into the world or at least into our own time and spread your word in your love. We pray for our friends in the part of the church who are now seeking a new minister. Bless them during their time of vacancy and as they go through the whole process of finding someone new. We know they will miss Jonathan and Caroline, but let them remember the scripture in Isaiah that says, See, I am doing a new thing, and lead them into the destiny you have planned for them. So one day, they will look back and see this was a good thing. We give thanks for all the wonderful people who came to minister to us during our vacancy. Bless them in their work for you. Thank you for Alan and the wise and knowledgeable counsel he's been for us. Bless him in his role with EPF. Give him safe journeys around the world. We thank you for this ancient town of ours of Derry and Dunkeys and also all the outlying towns. It's mentioned in history books in reference to William Wallace and Robert Bruce. It was once famous for its industry, especially calico printing, that used the special properties of the outer cannon. And we thank you that in all these centuries there have been churches and monasteries here helping to reach out to the poor and preach the gospel. We thank you for Denny Baptist Church. We thank you for this church of West Park and all the other churches in the towns for the work they have done in the past and we know you have plans for us in the future. Help us to be able to work together as one body in Christ and to show the love of Jesus in action. There's no shortage of ways to do this, Lord. We just need you to point us in the right direction. There's so much unemployment, poverty, and addictions within the area. We give thanks for the groups in our community who see a need and just reach out with a helping hand. We think of groups who not only provide our food bank, but work in many other ways to help their neighbours. Help us to help them do this. We pray for schools healthcare settings and businesses. And in these difficult times of COVID and cost of living rises, we give thanks for and ask your blessings on the groups like CAP, Connect2 and Hope. We pray for Strathcarry Hospice and the amazing work they do. We know it costs so much to provide this service, but Father, you have great resources. Please continue to pray, provide for them, and Lord, for all those who work to serve this community. Lord Jesus, bless each person present here today and the homes they represent. May your people leave here knowing they have met with you. And for those who don't know you yet, give them the desire not to leave here until they have met with you. And we ask this in Jesus' prayer.
Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the great deep. Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love. Lord God, we thank you today for your faithfulness to the church here, to your people here over all generations. And Lord, we pray that we would live faithfully in response to your faithfulness. And Lord, lead us by faith into all that you have for us, whatever that looks like. Give us hearts that are ready to follow, hearts that are ready to believe, and feet that are ready to move. For your glory, Lord, we pray. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Um, thank you for coming, everyone. We're going to eat some food now, and uh, then we're going to have a Kaylee. So uh, hope you can stick around for that. If you can't and you need to shoot off, thanks for coming, but don't shoot off without saying hello because it would be great to see you. So thanks, thanks to the band. Thank you to the church here for letting us be here. Um, thanks to the PowerPoint people, those on the words, the PA, uh, Alan, Martin, Simon, families, everyone who's come. Um, all the people I've missed out as well. Thanks for coming. And uh, let's go get some food. Shackles fall.